Hey, what's up, guys? Los Lindos is in yes. the house. My beautiful bride, Jackie Linda. Hey, guys. Sam Lindo. That's our nicknames, you know. Of course, we met in the club, and I had to win her over. I had to show her what was what yeah. was good, right? <laughs> our real names are Sam and Jackie. Yes. Club stories for another time. It's okay. For sure. <laughs> yes. But, um, you know, we've been married for 10 years, mm -hmm. ten, going on 10 years this year. Yeah. And we've got four boys, ages 19, 14, 13, and four, four years, years old. old. So yeah. having that... that that big of a family and being yeah. married for this long, it requires some patience, Yes. right? And does. as we continue our study on Ephesians chapter mm -hmm. four, verses one through three, yeah. we have the honor of, of living out the, the calling that you've been called into and talking through patience and applying yeah. it to the calling of living by one purpose and one legacy. Yeah. So um, speaking of patience, we've got some experience, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So, so there was a time where I remember Jackie, you know, the thing that we struggle with is, is her being ready on time. So we were going to a wedding. Mm -hmm. We had an hour to get to that destination and the wedding is getting ready to start. Yeah. Now, when you pull up, I'm thinking, all right, I got my wallet, my keys, my phone. I'm ready to go. Like we're getting in. This wedding's getting ready to start. Mm -hmm. But I get out the car and after putting on my coat, I'm standing out there just <laughs> waiting by myself. And there so my, my beautiful lady is with the visor yeah. down, doing some some checks, <laughs> no. and and then her shoes are still off her feet. I, I don't understand it. I don't get it. You needed patience with me. The girls that get it, get it. I had to put my heels on, change my purse, get my water and my coffee ready. You know, sure. all the things. You know what, ladies? Y'all do the most. Y'all do the most. It's but okay. it's okay. You know what? I'm sure there's some ladies out there that have to wait on their guys, right? Yes. What about that time? when you were watching your football game and I was waiting for you hold to on. have this serious talk. Hold on, hold on. Not just any football game. It's the Bucks game. Yeah, your we, Bucks. We got to set our time yeah. for the Bucks game, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, and I can't, don't blame me if it goes into overtime. No. And you know what, ladies, five minutes left in the game doesn't mean five minutes. Like, give us some grace. Add some time to yeah. that. Because the game might go into overtime. Uh -huh. Everything, things can happen. And those are just some funny instances yeah, of, sure. of us um, trying to be patient with each mm -hmm. other. Uh, but there's some more serious uh, yeah. issues that may present themselves in the future yeah. of your relationship. And sure. you know what? One of them is as, as husband and wife mm -hmm. or as a couple, yeah. one of you may be a little bit farther in your spiritual journey. And you yeah. have to be patient with the other one mm -hmm. to walk alongside of them, right? Yeah. Or what about with kids? Like, yeah. man, there's a lot of patience to be had in families with kids, mm -hmm. whether it's school, whether it's um, time or, or whether it's their, their faith and them taking their steps in their journey. Yeah. Um, but even more serious than that, what about when you uh, as, as spouses, as husband and wife, as mm -hmm. a couple, you face your challenges? How are you patient with one another with the more serious issues that will present yeah. themselves yeah, as they sure. come forth? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk about a time when I was dealing with a lot. I was going through um, postpartum after our fourth child and it led to depression and anxiety. And it was really hard. It was really hard to navigate through that, have patience with myself, have patience with Sam, pray to God. I mean, I was going through it and it took me some time, but as I was going through it, I was crying. I was, um, one time at Mary Life, I stormed off. Mm -hmm. um, that's real, that's real life, y'all. Like, yeah. <laughs> listen, we, I had just become a pastor. Yeah. Um, we're get, we're starting to lead the married ministry. Mm -hmm. And I knew that driving in to the church that day, it wasn't necessarily right. There was things that weren't clicking. And this was yeah. a time period where you were just going through some hard, hard thoughts. And, yeah. and, and you were just experiencing that depression and anxiety to it yeah. utmost. Yeah, I mean, I remember one time it was like my breaking point. I had to call my mom, I had to call my sister, and I had to tell them like, can you get Sebastian for me? Because it was overwhelming. All the triggers, I felt like Sam wasn't understanding me. I wasn't understanding myself. I felt like this was the hardest thing I've had to deal with. Yeah. And it was very hard to have patience. It's hard to understand when mm -hmm. you make it about you. 
you know, because yeah. what I did in those circumstances. So, yeah, we had just gone into our married life ministry. We're leading it. I'm becoming mm -hmm. a pastor. I made it about me. How's she going to storm out like that? Why are you going to make me look bad? Like, man, am I a leader? Am I a pastor? Am mm -hmm. I am I still called to these things? Yeah. Can we still do this? Can we function in that mm -hmm. way? So I'm questioning myself in that way. And then when she wants to give up Sebastian for a week, I'm like, oh, my gosh, am I not a good father? Mm -hmm. Am I this horrible dad that can't step in and, yeah. and take care? of his family the way that that God is calling him so yeah. I started just looking at myself and really um was making about me as mm -hmm. opposed to trying to understand you yeah and I'm sure there were some ways you felt too as far as um you and your feelings oh yeah I mean I felt like is he blaming me am I blaming myself am I blaming him I mean I just wanted to be healed I really just wanted to be healed I blame God I, it was just a tough time and I feel like in that time, you know, I'm this happy, bubbly person and I was going through it. Mm -hmm. And we were just came to, to Ybor mm -hmm. and it was so hard to balance life, work, everything, being married, joining groups and me being in this mental health space. Yeah. And this is where we could turn to to the Bible for, yes. for some advice and, and for some guidance. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. In Proverbs 1911. A person's wisdom yields patient. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Offense keeps us from activating patience. It does, yeah. right? Yeah. When we think about that heart of offense and we make it about us mm -hmm. as an individual, it eliminates us from talking to the other person and yeah. understanding what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And what that means is you're making yourself the patient. When you think about a patient and a doctor, mm -hmm. it's all about you. Yeah. It's all about what, what you need and the treatment that you need. Yeah. And so unfortunately, you can't be the patient and have patience. Yeah. You can't be the patient and mm -hmm. have patience. You got to do one or the other. And in order to be able to have patience with your spouse, yeah. you can't be her patient and yeah. vice versa. Men might be facing the same type of circumstances mm -hmm. in the woman. Yeah. You can't be the patient at, at that time. Mm -hmm. So you've got to stop looking at yourself as the patient and you've got to start seeking God's presence and figuring out what is that heart of offense mm -hmm. that's making you make this situation or this circumstance or these feelings about you. Yeah. For sure. Um, in Psalms 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned and heard my cry. Mm. He turned and heard my cry. Yeah, like I he's listening, he's right? Listening. Yeah. You know, the way we, we, we do this is we have to create an environment of patience. Yes. Patience is a result. Mm -hmm. It's a result. And the way that we create that environment yeah. is we have to stop waiting on the person, and we have to start waiting on God. Yeah. We have to wait on God. Mm -hmm. And the way we do that is we bring it to him and we invite him into mm -hmm. that space. And so the first step in giving it to God, whenever the offense is setting in, uh, big or small, mm -hmm. is invite him into that prayer time. Yeah, Invite him into that space to yeah. do the work that only he can do. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, when I prayed about what the offense was that was keeping me from understanding your situation, it mm -hmm. was crazy. I started thinking back to my childhood because there was a time yeah. you slammed the door and she was crying and she was upset, hysterical. Yeah. I couldn't understand it. And then I mm -hmm. had like a flashback of my childhood and I remembered yeah. my mom. My mom faced depression, anxiety mm -hmm. to the utmost. And I remember slamming my door, just going in my room to get away from all the stress, all yeah. the drama, all the worry, mm -hmm. all the fear. Mm -hmm. And I just had to calm myself. And I told myself I would never allow myself to experience that again. And I found myself yeah. seeing you do that right. and that door being shut. And I'm like, I don't ever want to go through this. I don't want to feel this yeah. ever, ever, ever again and walk through that anymore mm -hmm. and that's what god revealed to me and mm -hmm. and when we have what we have done here is you know in examining ourselves mm -hmm. in examining myself yeah. i was able to examine the heart of offense and what what it was that was truly triggering that offense mm -hmm. and it was from my past mm -hmm. it was that relationship with my mom yeah. and now i'm able to look at you differently and 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 have that grace mm -hmm. not only for the past but it allows me to have that grace with you for the future. Yes. And in Romans 5, 3, verse 4, we can rejoice too. When we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength and character, and character strengthens our hope 
our confidence, hope of salvation. Mm -hmm. You know what? And you may be wondering as you're reading that scripture, wait a minute, I didn't see the word patience. I thought we were talking about patience. Yeah. <laughs> well, endurance is actually a synonym in the English language mm -hmm. of patience. But when you dive deeper into the scripture and you look at the Strong's Dictionary and the Greek definition of the word that's used there mm -hmm. um, in Greek, it's actually patience. It's so patience. Cool. And the patience is a result of those trials and tribulations. Yeah. But it just doesn't happen, right? Mm -hmm. There's something that happens in between the trials and tribulations. Yeah. And that's where we have to focus as to how we look at those trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. Are they obstacles or are they opportunities? Yeah. Right. Because these can be obstacles that we look at as challenges. And now how do we get through this? Yeah. What am I going to do? Or, you know, are they opportunities? God, you know what? What are you going to do through this? Because yeah. I know you show out everywhere and I've seen For you. Sure. I felt you. So, God, how are you going to help me through this opportunity as opposed to um, looking at this as an obstacle? Yeah. Um, and in my healing journey, this is one verse that I clung on to, and I'm still holding on to it. Psalms 32, 7, you are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. And in my healing process, it took time. Mm -hmm. It took patience. I felt like I had to pray to God, like, take this away from me or just help me get through this. Help Sam understand what I'm going through because yeah. there was times that I felt like he didn't understand what I was going through. I wanted him to be in my shoes. Yeah. And I felt like I did have to put into prayer, put into practice what I was going through. I had certain people that came around me and that helped me in the journey, and I was not alone. Mm -hmm. They were facing this as well. And that helped me. I went to counseling. I went to doctors. I got on medication, even though I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. I just felt like this had to be something that we had to focus on yeah. together. And it really brought us together. Yeah. It brought us closer. Yeah, when we when we set the environment by mm -hmm. inviting God into that space, mm -hmm. what it did was it created the space for us to have patience with each other. Yeah. And that patience led to the hope, the hope that we have in Christ, where we have that hope for the future. Yeah. You know, a, a house, when we bought our house, it was just a house. Mm -hmm. But what made it a home was the pictures on the wall, um, all the wonderful decorations that you do, because yeah. that's not me, I, I ain't my <laughs> style. But, that's what made it a home. And yeah. then what even made it more of a home is the memories we created it in. Mm -hmm. Patience is this void. It's a house. But patience can't be had mm -hmm. until we fill the environment. And the environment needs to be filled with God's presence. Yes. And I just remember that at that time when we were learning patience and trying to figure this normal out, right? Yeah. This new normal out. Yeah. I feel like there was times that I could talk to you. Yeah. That I can tell you, hey, these are my triggers. Yeah. This is what I'm walking through. Can you help me? You yeah. started helping me with Sebastian more, with mm -hmm. the kids more. Mm -hmm. He started understanding what I was walking through and knew how serious it was. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where we're not definitely moving in the heart of offense. And then I thank you, too, because mm -hmm. you started understanding to be patient with me. Like, yeah, it wasn't easy for me to understand what mm -hmm. it was. And so there's times where you've even exhibited patience with me. of, yeah. All right. He's not going to get it right away. But I know like yes. God's, God's talking to him. <laughs> yeah, I'm trusting that God's talking to yeah. him. And, you know, maybe five minutes later, 30 minutes later, we're coming back and we're revisiting and, and saying, I'm sorry. And, and asking for forgiveness and having that conversation. So yeah. um, it's pretty cool. You know, we talked about that time where Jackie stormed out of, mm -hmm. uh, of married life from groups. Yeah. And what, God, what, what the enemy meant for evil, God took in turn for good. Mm -hmm. In the midst of that storming out, yeah. we actually had a couple that saw what we were going through mm -hmm. and they recognized the symptoms without being spoken to because they had experienced the very same yeah. thing in their relationship. Mm -hmm. And they invited us into a friendship, yeah. into a relationship that we maintain to this day yes. where um, they walked us through that season. Mm -hmm. We walk alongside of each other now yeah. and like we do life together. Yes, like we, we have that guys. community. Yes. So um, <laughs> you know who you are and we love you. <laughs> we love you dearly. You know, are we perfect now? No, but no. We, we have the blueprint now, right? Yeah. We have the blueprint now. And, and here's where we want to provide you with next steps because mm -hmm. the blueprint is yours as well. Yeah. Your next steps are when you have faced with these scenarios where mm -hmm. you're required to have patience is to set the environment for the patience to be had in. Yeah. And here's your next steps in setting that environment. Mm -hmm. Number one is examine yourself inwardly. Examine in your own heart where it is that you're offended with this person's actions mm -hmm. 
with your spouse's actions? Why is it so offensive to you? And then your next step is to go upwardly with that offense. Mm -hmm. Seek God in prayer. Seek God to bring his presence into the midst of this relationship and into the heart of whatever offense you're experiencing so that he can show you clearly where it is that you are offended. And then number three is be able to look towards the future. Look yeah. towards the future of a hope, right? Because yeah. through those trials and tribulations comes the, the, the patience. Mm-hmm. And from the patience comes the strength and the, and the hope for the future. Yeah. Because Christ is our salvation. Mm-hmm. So he's already paid the cost. Yeah. So we have a bright hope for our future. Yes. Thank you for being patient with me. Oh, you're so I sweet. You. <laughs> you know, no, man. Full disclosure, full mental health disclosure. Yeah. You know, mental health is a serious thing. And we want you to know that there are resources available to you through Grace Family Mm -hmm. Church, through your group leaders, through your pastors. But the only way that you're going to be able to uh, know about those resources is by having Mm -hmm. the conversation. Please don't hide whatever you're dealing with behind closed doors, behind closed doors. Yeah, it's real. Yeah. Yeah. Open the door to the discussion with your group leaders, to Mm -hmm. your pastors, so we could come alongside of you and help provide resources so that you know you're not walking through this alone and that you have people that are willing to walk alongside of you and resources that are available to you. Yes. At this time, we want to uh, pass it over to you and your groups to have some honest and and, and transparent conversation of how you can have patience to walk worthy of your calling towards one purpose and one one legacy. legacy. Love you guys.